Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. Matt, you like how I just went on cute, right? You still just went on. on. I exploded. Everything just changed. <laughs> the spread, the Thunder Contest winner is here. Maddie Johnson in the house. At last. Tell the Vaniacs, the Vayner Nation, your story, who you are, how you won, what we've been doing. Give them a little one minute All right. hoopla while um, I pour you some bubbles. Absolutely. So back at the two year anniversary of Wine Lib TV, uh, there was a big drawing. I'm the big winner. So <laughs> it's taken me a while to get out here. I've been finishing up med school. Gary, you've been traveling all over the world. That's how I do. Um, and so we finally got to meet up. Yes. Big day coming up for you in a couple of weeks, I hear. Absolutely. I'm finishing up med school. Um, Ma, come on. <laughs> a little more enthusiasm, Ma. There we go. All right. Um, moving to Notre Dame, buying a house, big changes. Good for you, man. Lots of fun. And that's why it got, it got real cool. It got in from L.A. last night. Yeah. I picked him up this morning on the way here. We drove in together, yeah. which was a lot of fun. Got to know each other. And he said he wanted to do bubbles, kind of like celebration, right? Absolutely. Because Listen to how lucky this guy is. We pick this date, and then we find out 10 days ago that I'm doing Conan tonight. So he's coming. He's going to be in the green room. Ma, this is ridiculous. You've never even been in the green room. <laughs> this guy comes out of nowhere, out of some town in L.A., and he's like, he's here. And he's going to be there. So pretty cool. I am excited. So let's talk about what we're doing today on yeah. the Thunder Show. You decided you want to do bubbles. You mentioned that your palate was similar to the Monsters. You like the sweetness. You guys mm -hmm. are candy, fruity type of guys, would you Absolutely. say, right? So we're going to go with the first wine, Mott. Get ready, zoom in. I know you're a little rusty this early in the morning. Did you see how angry you looked when you first came in? Oh, miserable. Right? I warmed him up a bit. You did, right? Oh, you guys yeah. were talking about Grand Theft Auto 4. You were all pumped. I walk in here, it's like, yeah, I slapped that bitch. I'm like, what's <laughs> going on in here? All right, the Marenko. Uh, Brachetto, 2007, 16 U.S. dollars, and uh, this is an Italian Piedmonte sparkling wine, which is sweet. Uh, it's made from Brachetto and a little Moscato de Nero. Um, pretty interesting little wine. Uh, you can see it comes in a reddish color, which is a little bit different. Um, let's give it a sniffy sniff. All right. Now this is a red sparkling wine, which is, you know, you see the sparkling Shirazes at times. Uh, obviously we get rosé with the Pinot Noir skins, but this is flat out reddish uh, in its approach on the nose. Let's see what's going on. What are you getting? Um, if anything. Well, I'm not getting a lot. It's, um, it is tight. It doesn't smell like a lot of champagnes. It's more, it's more on the red wine, definitely, category. That's... No question. It is. It is. It really smells much more like a red wine than it does a sparkling wine, except for like the bubbles and the frizzante action that you get. Um, I do get a little bit of like dark rose petal. I, I get a, a little hint of a, like a Kirsch Royale kind of thing going on, which is kind of interesting. Let's give it a whirl. That's lovely. You like this, right? <laughs> as soon as I put it in my mouth, Ma, try something. You're going to love this stuff. Um, I think I grabbed that like a monster. You see, like, grab the top of it. It's good, right? Oh, it's even too, it's too much? sweet for me. It's very too sweet, sweet for you? Is it too sweet for you? It's very sweet. I like it, though. But it's definitely it's sweet. High residual count loaded. I mean, loaded with strawberry shortcake exploding in your mouth. I mean, yeah. I wish we had a camera on Mott. He's like, your glasses are falling off. You were shaking your head in agreement so much. Um, it's funny to see you this way, Mott. You're really just waking up. I'm having fun here. I, have a I, I think we're going to put a camera here and just like have a Mott cam. I think that would be more views on that than mine. Anyway, great strawberries. I do get the rose petals again. High level of sweetness. Mm. Um, definitely would be too sweet for a, a vast majority of drinkers out there if you don't like the sweet. But definitely, definitely a huge winner for a lot of people, we're rinsing. Mm -hmm. Here, so just whirl it and dump it. Um, a huge winner for a lot of people. Definitely a great like first date wine for somebody who you know for you know maybe you know for girls and guys who don't like dry wine. Um, and uh, definitely an interesting little play. Uh, to me, you know, it's an 86, 87 point wine because it lacks the real complexity that makes you go crazy. But this is just fun, fun city. Oh yeah. Right? I mean, 16 bones, that gets you like a movie ticket and a popcorn now. 
You know, I mean, it's at like, the budget theater. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So, you know, definitely not the not the worst play for your bubble money. Um, definitely a great celebratory kind of product, especially if you're just getting into vino and the sugar is really where you're at at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're you're a noob, as you said. Yeah, I and know. so you like that. Yeah, it's it's really sweet. Definitely, if you know, you're definitely getting a sweet wine. I can't even tell if there's any alcohol in there. At all. <laughs> yeah, now the alcohol content is five point five percent, so you can like. Maybe, maybe it's not a good first date wine. All right, let's do some shout outs. Amy Stell, happy birthday. Your boyfriend, Brian Black. Is it Black? Yeah, Brian Black. That, that, always, that Black always makes me think of The Simpsons. Did you see that one episode where it's crusty and he says, Your camp counselor, Mr. Black. It was like a voiceover. Did you see that one? Oh, yeah. You did, right? Yeah, I you did see that one. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> Sarah Helbron, happy birthday to you. And a big graduation shout out. You know how this feels. Oh, yeah. Something. Absolutely. In environmental policy and biology. Environmental policy and biology. You're Good job. Biology, right? Absolutely. Malky Baker. Congratulations. Great job. Done with the shout outs. Oh, Mott. Link up the Listomania Amazon contest. We're going to have a huge contest. We have a winner here. We're going to do a big blowout on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, Mott, link it up. Listomania. Make a couple good Listomanias. Somebody made one that uh, 101 books, 101 books. That was really cool. Somebody else said the ultimate Vaniac Listomania. It had the Jets bucket in it. <laughs> Amazon sells the Jets bucket. Amazon's insane. Amazon sells everything. That's pretty much true. Let's move on. Louis de Grenell, 2000, oh no, non-vintage, excuse me, Louis de Grenell, some more. Uh, this wine is a rosé of 100% Cabernet Franc from the Loire Valley, 14 US dollars. And let's see what this is doing for us. You can see there's a little pinky action, mm-hmm. which we always like. There we go, just getting, um, you know, it's a real celebration, Mott. I mean, national television, med school, graduation, moving back to Notre Dame area, it's really cool. And Mott. It's almost done with Grand Theft Auto 4. I mean, there's a lot to celebrate. <laughs> All right, some really, really beautiful color. Um, just gorgeous. I love rosé. Uh, I love watching the bubs of rosé scroll up. I think, let me talk a little bit about sparkling wine while we're here, because you know, still, still got to be a little serious. I got to put a little content right. out if you don't mind. A lot of people underestimate how flexible bubbles are and how much more food can be consumed with champagne and sparkling wine. If you're eating you know, sushi, if you're eating light, you know, Vietnamese food and Thai food, spicy foods, it's great. If you're eating just light lobster and, you know, little pastas, champagne, sparkling wines can be amazing compliments and they're not just reserved for, you know, cheering and, you know, you know, popping at graduation or just, you know, celebratory kind of situations. It's a really flexible and really monumental product that can really pair with a lot more foods. And so I really hope that if you like the bubbles as much as I do, and I think a lot of you now know through enough shows that sparkling wine is probably my favorite category, um, that you need to be using them in far more different uh, scenarios. And so please expand. You know, changing the wine world, expanding our palates includes trying different food and wine pairings in different situations. Champagne needs to be, and sparkling wine needs to be, used in a far more variety of foods. I mean, hot dogs. Seriously, go to a Cubs game, <laughs> pop a little bubs, drink it hot, it's, it's awesome. So I hope a lot more people do that. I think you should give this a sniffy snap. All right, let's give it a go. I like how you had the wristband. You came with the wristband. Oh yeah, thanks thanks Santa for me. Santa Gary V. <laughs> Twitter, Mott, I don't think a lot of people know what that is. So Mott, link it up. Link up my Santa Gary V account on Twitter. Hmm. Different. Yeah. Then the last wine. Now I'm gonna ask you a funny question. Did you ever eat clusters cereal? Do you remember that clusters, like honey clusters? Matt, did you? It smells like. Do you get the grainy kind of aspect of this There's wine? There's a little more grain in this one. Yeah, You're a Midwest sure. boy. You know what the right? The graininess <laughs> yeah. and all that. I get a lot more graininess in this. I get a subtle raspberry flavor, and I also get like chalk, like a dust kind of feeling when I smell this wine. A little bit. You yeah. got that? You see where I'm I going with that? that? That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And then there's, remember that Korean bean thing I kept telling you about, Mott, like a hundred trillion episodes ago, and a lot of people told me what it was, but of course some, a clown didn't like soak it in. It was like crushed ice, and then you put the beans on top of it. I think it's from Korea. Mm-hmm. Remember that mouse wine I'm supposed to drink from Dignation? Did oh, you yeah. see that? <laughs> We're about to do that. All right. Anyway, crushed ice and like the bean, like sweet beans, it smells like that as well. I've got to get that name down. So, 
All you Vaniacs, please answer me like you did last time. This time I'll register it in my mind. Let's give it a whirl. All right. What do you think? Tell the truth. Uh -oh. I did not make this wine. <laughs> um, I like this one a little bit better. It's not as sickeningly sweet. You like this better? Um, for different reasons. Please expand. Um, it is uh, a little more yeasty, a little more grain, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of what I come to expect from sparkling wines. Um, so maybe a little more stereotypical what I'm yeah, looking for sure. when I pick up a sparkling wine. Um, Do you get the greeniness on the finish? Like flat out, like taste it again. All right. Here, let me give you a little more. Yeah. This, this champagne is wild. Because the Cab Franc is so vegetal, I, and this is 100% Cab Franc, it's got really nice rose petals, again, really floral in the beginning. The greenness is definitely there. Much higher level of yeast, no doubt. But then on the finish, you get an obnoxiously obvious vegetable component. I'm gonna go with zucchini up in this piece. I mean, it's a, it's green, it's celery stick. Yeah. Um, it's almost like you'd expect an aftertaste of a V8 juice. <laughs> you know, I mean, do you, I, mean, I get a very heavy dose of, uh, of, of veggies on this. I'm really fascinated, actually, by this. I've never had this before. I can see a lot of people disliking this. Mott, try it. Yeah. Oh, oh, you like it, huh? I do. It's, um... Is it different, complex? I mean, what, what is, what, what's really winning you over? I, it's just, it's, I'm still tasting it. It's actually got a pretty good length, and it's that um, kind of green and wheat. Mott, uh, yeah, it's taste. good. I just don't like the finish. Right. You like it up to the point where you actually yeah. taste it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the Cab Francs. I like it too, but it's very funky. I mean, mm -hmm. it's definitely, you know, it's definitely a more complex finish. I'm excited for you to try this next one. All right. Let's move on. Um, to me, you know, 87, 86, you know, solid sparkling wine. Again, I rated these in a similar level, but what's really fun is they're totally different. You know, for me, they both do different things that I appreciate, mm -hmm. and this is where you need to really know your palate and know what you want. There's a time for this, yeah, ladies, you know, <laughs> and there's a time for this, you know, so it really just depends on what your mental scene is. Mm -hmm. Gruet, demi-sec, sparkling. This is from New Mexico, 11 US dollars. Now, Gruet has made a big name for itself, we're gonna rinse. Uh, from New Mexico, it, they've really become a big sparkling company. A lot of people love what's going on there. They've done a great job marketing. They've done a great job producing quality sparkling wines for very good prices. So um, I give them a lot of kudos. Um, this wine rolls in at 11 US dollars. I would be remiss to m not mention the fact that many Vaniacs in the ballpark of three or four, which is not a lot, but a lot what you're about to hear what I've got to say, because it's more than any other that I've ever seen. I hate to do this, but this is the truth. I feel like an obligation. Many maniacs have mentioned that they've been snubbed or age demoed or been treated rudely at Gruet, at the actual winery. So if anybody from Gruet is watching this, I think you may want to look into that. You know, um, I think it's something that you may want to address. So just figured out how to mention that. Let's give this a sniffy sniff. A little more classic nose, right? Mm -hmm. I get beautiful honey-covered almonds on the nose. And like cinnamon toast crunch. You know, like a little bit of like, take out the cinnamon, so it's like toasted crunch, right? <laughs> no cinnamon, sorry no. to throw you off on that. But like baked bread, you know, mm -hmm. like the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> you know, oh no, that's Green Giant. I just did the, he did the, no. right? Dude, 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 that green giant, right? It was more like, dude, he would like laugh, right? Yeah. Remember those biscuits? Did you ever have any of those? Oh, yeah. Those were awesome. Those were awesome biscuits. Right? I love biscuits. Not. <laughs> 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 All right, let's give this a whirl. Yeah. What are you getting on the nose? Anything? You getting a little it's, apple? Just a little apple, too. A little apple. It's, um, this one's harder for me to describe. Okay, let's give it a whirl.
Now this is the demi sec. I know you're tasting apples now. Oh yeah. Right? It's like apples for days. It's like for apple days. juice. Oh yeah. What do you think? It's obvious. Um, boy, it's just still tasting apples, man. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really good. That way, is it is it half pregnant for you? Like trying to be too sweet, trying to be dry, it gets a little awkward there. I it's feel not, like it's doing a little bit of that. It's not too sweet. For no, sure. it's not. Um, but little, it's got a little. It's little got a little mouth tea. pucker. Yep. A little bit. What do you think? All in all, um, it's pretty good. You like sparkling wine? I do. Um, I think it's underrated. I like it. What? This is interesting to me. Um, I like the apple juicy kind of thing going on. It's a little bit of mox apple juice kind of thing going on, which I appreciate. It's also um, got a nice balance of like dry and sweet. I think it can, it can, it's one of those tricky ones, right? Where it either appeases everybody or appeases nobody. Um, kind of like Wine Library TV, Mott. So we've got to kind of be, you know, kind of like for that. It's got a huge G on the label. I kind of like that too. Um, but I could represent giants since blue. So maybe I don't like that. Yeah. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's solid. I, I, you know, to me, this is a fun little sparkling wine to recommend to a lot of different people. Plus, this is a sparkling wine that can really pair up with some like yellow tin tuna, yellow fin tuna, excuse me, uh, some other sushis would really go well with wasabi. Um, so it's an interesting little uh, bubbly. I don't mind it. I like the apple kind of play. What about you? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's um, kind of what I expect from champagnes. It's fruity. It's uh, it's not too far one way or the other. So you can serve it at a party or something. Sure. What's the best sparkling wine you've had? Or is there anything that's really stood out for you? Um, I'm still searching for that perfect bubbly. Have you had the Moets and the Clicos and the Paris Jouets? Have you had those? I'm sure I have. Um, you still remember them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing with sparkling wine. A lot of time, you don't remember which ones you had, Mop, because, you know, when you're drinking sparkling wine, you're drinking. I remember. What? It was the bottle of Don P I had on February 4th, 2008. February 4th, At here on the Thunder Share. <laughs> you loved it, huh? It was oh, that, Yeah, you loved that. Well, you know what, Mott? You might love this, because we're about to pour and sample. You really went for it here. Well, I said, pick anything yeah. you want. He was like, sure. 100 bucks. I get it. all your guests, right? That's right. Uh, the Devonage 1988 Brut Champagne, 97 points, Wine Spectator, 100 U.S. Bones, and that, my friends, is a lot of cash for bubbles, but they get very special. And what I love about the Devonage is this is a look at the gold. Look at this gold. Is that crazy? Let me yeah. pour you a little more. I mean, I poured more on the ground than I did for you. Um, this is a top small producer. They've been rolling deep since 1837, Mott. So these guys are no jokers. And what's really interesting is that they are. Uh, these are kind of champagnes and bubbles that I tend to drink in lieu of a Dom P, in lieu of a Cristal, in lieu of a Perrier Jouet flower bottles, the one you always see. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun to explore the smaller producers that are making top quality stuff. Not that the others aren't. I mean, honestly, for example, I'll give you a little, here's a little teaser to my book. Somehow, even though I dissed the crap out of it 24-7, 365, Dom P 1999 champagne made my top 101 wines because it was ripping good. So, you know, I'm, I kind of, I start the uh, line with I'm eating humble pie, but you know what? Even my own preconceived notions, I'm not going to uh, allow, and that's how we roll. All right. Cheers, my man. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, my Thanks pleasure. for schlepping from LA. And, uh, and uh, we have a good day today. It's a big day. It's a huge day. And congratulations. It's a real big accomplishment. We're Thank proud you. of you. I know the Vayner Nation's proud of you. Should we, should we link up your email so they can all email you congratulations? Uh, or you don't want to deal with that? Well, sure. I'll, I'll deal with that. You want to deal with it, right? It always, <laughs> it always feels nice to get cuddled. Ma! Link this man's email up. Vaniac, send this guy congratulations. That's a big accomplishment with a lot of work, I'm sure. And so, not like me and Ma who do nothing and just get credit for it. This is real work. Let's get into this champagne. This is serious stuff. 100 U.S. bones. Sniffy sniff. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> I, was, I was so pumped. I was like, wait till he smells this. <laughs> now this is wild. Smell this, Mott. This is almost like motor oil. This is like almost like a garage, right? It's very heavy. 
You're a little bit concerned about that, right? Yeah. Well, I, you're a little worried. I saw it. A little bit like feet. A little bit like rotten peanuts. Yeah. You like that rotten peanuts? That's play. a good one. Thank you. Um, definitely, I get a little bit of auto body shop. You know, mm -hmm. like just like feels like oils mixed together. Like you know, Ma. Ma, you're concerned. It's really opening up now. It's, it's really expected. opening up. Now you get a, you get a little hint of like cheese. Maybe that's where the rotten feet thing is coming yeah. in. It's like cheesy on the nose. This is yeasty. Wild, huh? Yeah. It really smells like... Uh, crazy. I'll tell you what it really smells like. A dish of mushrooms. I'll buy that. You like that, right? Mm. No, really. This really has a mushroomy kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. Which I'm really feeling. God, this really smells like mushrooms. Come on, one more time. Seriously, it's like, it's like heavy now. Like now it really smells like a risotto to me. Like a mushroom risotto. It does. Let's give it a whirl, right? Yeah. All right. I'm serious. I'm not fooling around here. Let's give it a whirl. I'm excited. This is complexity. <laughs> this is complexity. It's still still changing here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this has a lot going on. Uh, if you want to talk about greeniness, um, really obvious lemon peel. You get the acidity, you get a little mm -hmm. pucker up action in the yep. back. I love this lemon peel. Again, I often refer to it as the espresso lemon. You know, that little lemon piece, I always eat that. That's what this reminds me of. Um, I get gorgeous greeniness, a kasha component that I like so much. Um, it's, it's definitely very complex. Where are you going with this? Anything else you got to add? It's blowing by me. I'm just no trying worries. to follow it here. Don't forget. Don't, well, you're good. Yeah, Don't forget. Good. Everybody has their own palate. It's your own taste. Does it remind you of anything? You can go weird here. You'd be like, you know, one time I was playing D&D &D and, you know, it's like this bird pooped and the smell. I mean, it could go anywhere. Not like that, right? It's complicated. Yeah, Don't it's worry. very complicated. I get a little bit of a forest floor kind of component, like the woody chips a little bit. There's some creaminess, yeah. too. Yeah, it is creamy. Very, right? Very creamy on the mid-palate. Definitely the most mm -hmm. heavy on the palate of the three sparklers oh, yeah. by spades. I mean, just a much heavier champagne. This, my friends, is exactly what I was referring to. To me, this is, if I go to Jean-Georges or Danielle or Alain Ducasse, a really top-flight French restaurant, and I'm having sweetbreads, or if I'm having, you know, a little lobster dish, you know, like the, the chef would like to welcome you with this lobster dish. Oh, good, get me the devotion. I mean, this is where you use it because this product, unlike the other three that you can totally chill with in the corner and drink oh. <laughs> at a party, this is not that kind of sparkler. Way too complicated, way too complex, and honestly, needs to be respected. I'm gonna have Panthro kind of like bow to it because it needs to be respected because it's that serious of a product. It's got enormous complexities. I'm still tasting it. Right now as I'm yapping here and thinking about what's going on in my mouth, I've converted to almost a pear component, a golden pear component now, really ripping through the back end of my palate. What I find also extremely fascinating, and I think you're gonna like this, as you got to sit with this, and I did it while you were doing that, taste it right off the bat. Right off the bat, go. You're gonna get a totally different experience because it evolves so quickly. It is completely now different. Now taste it out of my glass. I'm not scared. All right. Go ahead. You'll see, just the difference of being out and... That's definite. Is that wild? That's crazy, man. <laughs> That's <laughs> what's really amazing about this sparkler, is how much it changes, even within the first you know, 30, 40 seconds, two minutes of being exposed to the world. And so... I'm feeling this stuff. It's really good, it's really good, but I gotta be honest with you, it definitely needs a beware sign. You know, this is not, you're just getting into wine, you're gonna have your first serious champagne bottle, it might be too out there. I mean, I can even see for it's, you, it's definitely like, you know, it's I like perplexing. It. You, you, it's not a casual sparkling wine at all. No, this is more of a science project. <laughs> like, we should go science fair on this. Yeah, there's a lot to be thought about. 
No, there really and is. And it's, it's really good. I think Spectator went a little high. 97 is insanity. That's like, this is the best stuff ever. But I'm in the ballpark. I'm going to go 94 plus for my palette on this. I like it quite a bit. I think it's extremely serious. And it's definitely something I'm going to grab a bottle or two away and put away into my little cellar because it's, it's, it's really good. And it's really complicated. I'd like to see where it goes. It's an 88. I mean, that's cool. Mmm. Good stuff. What else, Mop? Big day today. Are you going to stay up and watch? You'd like to make it. Because you had to wake up so early to tape this. You might not, Maybe you can go home, take a nap. Okay, and then, you know, maybe you could do that. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for being on. You oh, my it? pleasure. It's fun. So, you've got to ask the question of the day. You are pre pretty prepared. Go ahead. Yeah. Question of the day. Um, so, I'll give you a little question of the day and my answer so everyone knows what I'm after. Where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I want to hear your favorite wine moment. And what I mean by that is um, a couple years ago, I uh, went out, uh, was dating this one girl, went out to camping Pimpin. Monterey Bay on the coast, um, picked up uh, some little penguin Shiraz nice. from the lo local, local store. store. Um, I love that it doesn't but, have to be like this serious wine to be like, oh you know, Little goodness. Penguin is like a total commodity brand, but it's the moment, it's the people, and it it's was, the scene, right? It was under a star-filled sky listening to the ocean break on the cliffs. This guy got real romantic. You what are you trying to pull my girls? He just, <laughs> he just went so romantic, he's going to steal all the Vayner chicks. That was pretty good stuff. Nice. Your favorite wine moment. Yeah. Awesome. Because you, with a little bit of me, and guys like this, we're changing the wine world.